The trade war is on. Today, China retaliated against the U.S. by announcing plans to slap tariffs on $60 billion of U.S. goods. This is rocking the markets. Right now, the Dow is down nearly 700 points. And despite the market's negative reaction, President Trump continued to insist in a series of tweets that tariffs are actually helping the economy. But it's not. Look at all of the products that might be affected. Even the president's own economic advisor acknowledged U.S. companies would likely pay a tax increase, which would ultimately be passed on to the consumer. The tariff on goods coming into the country, the Chinese aren't paying. Uh, no, but the Chinese will suffer GDP losses and so forth um, with respect to a diminishing export market. It's U.S. businesses and U.S. consumers who pay, correct? Uh, yes, to some extent. I, mean, yeah, I don't disagree with that. Again, both sides, both sides will suffer on this. CNN international business anchor Julia Chatterley is joining me now. Um, Julia, what do you make about the president's assertions about how tariffs work? You know, there is a lot of head scratching going on right now, I have to say, Brianna, and I think that's part of the pressure that you're seeing on markets. Look, innocent mistake or otherwise, there is definitely a misunderstanding going on here, and uh, I think this is a critical part. Let me keep it really simple and explain what's going on as far as tariffs are concerned. When the U.S. government slaps a 25% tariff or tax on some Chinese item, a company based here in the United States pays that additional cash in order to bring that good here into the United States. Now, some of that extra cost could be absorbed by the company itself, but probably not all of it. Some of that is going to be passed on to consumers. So things like bicycles, furniture, tires, car seats, they're all going to get more expensive. Now, eventually, U.S. firms will buy those goods from elsewhere. They won't buy them from China anymore. So, you know, in that case, what Cudlow was saying, Larry Cudlow was saying there is right. It does hurt the Chinese economy too. Both sides ultimately get hurt. There is a sharing of the pain. But, you know, I think that that's what markets are grappling with today. How big is that pain for U.S. companies like Apple, who have big interests in China here in the short term? But long term too, what does this mean for, for the U.S. economy, for U.S. jobs and for the global economy? You know, President Trump did tweet among many over the weekend that, that China broke this deal. Deal. And he has that right where he wants them. He may have a point to some degree because, you know, I think the Chinese were pretty restrained today, as you mentioned, in the tariff rises that they've put on in response. I'm sure they would prefer a deal. But when you look at what's going on from both sides here in the rhetoric, neither side is giving any ground to make a deal. So fine, the president's playing hardball, so we can expect lots of rhetoric here. His tweets are fierce. They're determined. They're aggressive. But they're not always accurate, Bjarne, and we have to remember that. Very good point, and thank you for explaining them to us, Julia. Julia Chatterley with us. And in 2018 alone, the total trade between the U.S. and China equaled $737 billion. China exported $558 billion of goods, while the U.S. exported about $179 billion. And one of the biggest exports to China was U.S. soybeans, and those farmers are really feeling the pinch. John Wesley Boyd Jr. is a soybean farmer in Baskerville, Virginia. He's the founder and president of the National Black Farmers Association. John, thank you so much for being with us. And as China is implementing you, tariffs Barbara. on U.S. goods, um, last year's trade war took a toll on you. How is this latest mm -hmm. round of tariffs going to impact you, do you think? Well, I think it's even worse because right now farmers are trying to get into their fields to actually uh, uh, plant soybeans. And I checked the market this morning and prices are beginning to plummet uh, uh, since the president's announcement. And the president of the United States owes farmers like myself uh, some type of plan of action. And we hear that uh, they, they're trying to sell some, some, some soybeans overseas. But at what price? Does, uh, you know, does that help American farmers? So right now, today, I was in the fields this morning getting my fields ready to uh, plant some soybeans, and we don't know the outcome of what's going to be in store for us uh, as uh, American farmers and, and, and producers in this country. And the president of the United States needs to take that into, into consideration. Farmers uh, were his base, you know, was his base. You know, they helped elect this president and make him president of the United States. And now he's turning his backs on America's farmers when we need him the most. The, the tariffs help send down uh, grain futures with soybeans slipping to a new contract low. What kind of price are you looking at now for a bushel, do you think, compared, and, and just put that in perspective for us, compared to what it would have been? 
Well, uh, and a few years ago, I was selling soybeans at $16.80 a bushel. And as I checked to come on your show today, soybeans have dropped just below $8 a bushel. That is a 50% reduction for those people who go to work every day and draw a salary. If you make $100,000 a year, you are now making 50. And you can't make it like that. And the president doesn't give clear answers on the future on what farmers can expect. You know, so we out here right now, we're paying for diesel fuel, we're paying for these uh, seeds at $60 a bag. Uh, where's the tariffs for that to help farmers, you know, reduce uh, our prices so, so we can afford all the necessary things that we need to get into the fields. The president is not giving clear direction for America's farmers and for the future of America's farmers in this country. In fact, he's helping us run us, he's helped run us out of, out of business right now with these kind of decisions. How, when, when you're dropping from $16 a bushel to $8 a bushel, how, how do you survive? I mean, your margin is not that much. Well, I'm not, and right now uh, I'm, I'm seeking a farm operating loan from the top 10 banks. They haven't been receptive to help me. And, uh, you know, we need some help, and we need it right now. And the president is playing footsie with China while America's farmers are on the losing end of the stick. And quite frankly, I don't know why more Midwestern farmers are not outraged and speaking out against this administration for its poor decision on helping America's farmers when we need them right now. John Wesley Boy Jr., thank you so much for your perspective from Virginia. We appreciate and, it. And uh, as we go, for people who want to watch more of my story, they can watch it on the History Channel this Thursday night at 10 p.m. It's going to show my soybean harvest and the difficulties that I have as a soybean producer. All right, John, thank you. We really appreciate you being with us. Uh, we're also going to keep an eye on the Dow.